In this video, what I'm going to show you is a way to manage your ongoing clients, like your retainer clients, uh, using a consistent system uh, with Trello boards. So what you'll have, you, you'll have a list of tasks and projects that are visible to your client and your team as well that you have locked in for this month. So just the things you've got on for list this month. You'll also have a column for what's in progress. So your client can easily see what part of that you're actually working on right now. There's also a space for things you're waiting for feedback on. So the client knows what you're waiting for them on as well. And then there's a list of uh, dones. So things you've done in previous months. So you've got history of the projects that you've done and the work that you've completed over time. Okay, so there are really five keys to making this work properly. And the first one is to really get the request out of email. If your clients are emailing your requests and you're actioning those and you're having the conversations via email, uh, if you've done this for a while, you probably have noticed that what can happen is things can get lost or multiple requests can be within the one email and it's very hard to have a conversation about one particular topic. The next key is that everything needs to live within the system. If it's not inside the system, then it's basically not getting done. And that's something that you need to teach your clients and you need to work with them to make sure that that's how things are, are working. So it needs a Trello card for a new project. The comments need to live within the system, within Trello, and you need to teach your clients how to do that. That way, there's only one place to look for what's, uh, what's in progress right now, what's coming up next, and who has done what. To save yourself some time when creating these uh, systems consistently and when you're spinning this up for a new client, what you want to do is you want to use a template. Then all you have to do is just duplicate it, edit some things to suit the new client that you're working with and you're ready to go with the consistent system you're using across all of your other clients, much faster and easier. You also want to be booking in a monthly WIP review with your clients. Now WIP, W-I-P stands for work in progress. So you want to let them know what has been worked on, what you need feedback from, what, like what you actually need from them, what's in progress and, uh, and what's actually coming up next. We do this just via Zoom, via a screen share, and uh, we just open up the Trello board, screen share that, the client can get access to, to what we're seeing, and we just walk them through each of the different parts, the new projects that are coming up, things we need feedback on, and so on. This helps us teach our clients how to actually use the system, which is fantastic. It gets us all on the same page and the same rhythm with how it all works. The final key is to batch the feedback. So what this means is when your clients have ideas or they've got requests that they want from you, you don't want to be handling these via email uh, as one-off things as they come in. Give the client a place to actually park this stuff and then you can review that during the monthly WIP meeting. So we just have an a, um, area within Trello where they can actually park these ideas, they can put some of the, the notes that they've got and things that they want to work on and have a chat to us about later and then we review them uh, in bulk. We batch process all of this stuff in one hit. This is the client dashboard. So you can see over on the left here, we've got a bit of a user guide, so they can start here. Just a bit of a, a welcome to your client to let them know uh, that they're in the right place. And also what I like to do is record a bit of a video here just to explain how this works. So you can use something like Loom and you can just walk through your process and how you want the client to use this system. Okay, what we've also got in here is a bit of contact info uh, about your own business. So we've got your own support email there. Uh, I've also got the contact info for the client and then a bit of a template for how to um, put together a project. So this, a client can just copy this and they can actually put together a new project for us in a structured way instead of just a very, uh, very generic way of requesting a project. They can do it in a way that works well for us. So you want to put your own template in there and customize that to suit the way that you work. We also have a column here for documents and info. So here you can put together things like your monthly reports, any login information, uh, meeting notes, uh, your proposal, or any like strategy blueprints that you've got here as well. Okay, so now we're moving on to the columns where we actually get stuff done. So this is where the actual tasks go. So we've got the someday maybe ideas. This is where the client can just park a new project in here. So example, project, they could just type that in there. And then these things they can park and you can review those when it comes time for your monthly whips. There's another column here for info needed. Uh, so some additional information is required from the client. So we like to put the projects in there so they know stuff that we need from them. Any monthly recurring tasks. So if you do things like Facebook ads or you do a particular SEO checklist or send monthly reports, this would go within the monthly task area. Backlog are for things that actually need to get done and you're going to prioritize those and schedule them. They're all planned and ready to go and they just sit in the backlog. To do next month, 
are things that are basically going to be done next month. So the projects that aren't going to be on the current queue, you've actually put them in for next month. So it's April this month, I'd put that in the current month, I'd just change this to April and then put in May for the next month. And if a client has additional projects that go outside what we've got in the retainer, we'll actually just put them in for the next month. And also during our monthly WIP, we'll actually plan these out so we know what's in and what's out according to the retainer that our client's on. Okay, so moving along, we also have a section for in progress. So when we take our projects that we have on for the month and we're actually working on them, we move them to in progress. So the client can easily see at a glance what we have on for the month and also what are we working on right now. And the last sections we've got here, review waiting. So this is when a project is basically complete and we uh, have it in review, we're waiting for the client on something or we're waiting for a particular third party for some feedback or a particular login or something like that. And then we've got done and then the month. So as projects are completed, we put them in done and then name the month and we just build out the lists here. So we always have history as to what projects we work on and when, so the client can has visibility and we have accountability. Okay, so the key here really is to have a system that works well for you. So take this framework, uh, remove what's not needed and tweak it to make it your own, but keep it consistent across all of your clients to suit the way that you work. All right, so hopefully now you can see how easy it is to create a system uh, that works well for ongoing clients, that uh, reduces the amount of email overwhelm and keeps things in one place. If you want access to this system, the link should be somewhere below this video. So you can just click that, duplicate it, and then customize it, tweak it, and make it your own.